Hello guys, it's Thomas, and today I'm going to show you some basic stuff. I'm actually going to try to cover two things in this episode. I'm going to cover how to dock, and I'm going to be going to Duna. And those two things will go hand in hand, just to make it a little bit easier, because going to Duna is not easy. So I'm going to come back when I have a rocket. Now this rocket's only going to contain the parts that's going to stay in Kerbin orbit, low LKO, low Kerbin orbit to refuel our vessel going to Duna. Okay guys, so I finished building this massive rocket, and I know what you're thinking. Thomas, why do you need that big of a rocket? You're only trying to get that part into orbit. Well, I decided I'm going to try to get as many of these extra orange canisters as I can into orbit also. So I tested this once, and I think I can get... I didn't go all the way up into orbit, but I think I can get at least six of these. So that would be the two, two and another two so at least um one of the outer stages all the way into orbit i actually fitted them with um a control module thing core space core i don't know whatever you want to call them so i can um control them and deorbit them afterwards so that's going to make it even less kessler -y, so i won't have kessler syndrome or whatever it's called and that's like supposed to be the thing where you have so much space debris you can't get into orbit and if you try to send something up, it'll just get exploded and cause even more space debris. So yeah. So let's start the little, not time lapse, but speedy uppy thing.
Okay guys, I got into an orbit and I actually have a lot of fuel left. That was close on my estimate. We went into these other stages a little bit, but our orbit is so circular, it just, it makes me perfectly happy. Because we're only like 30 meters off in this difference, which means it's jittery, but at least it's nice. I mean, just look at it, it's so circular. If you cover up the lows, you can even tell. Okay, before I go on to make my next rocket, there's one last thing I need to actually do. I actually have um, little thrusters on here to deorbit the snow cone, just because that adds a little more mass, and it's a little larger, and it adds a little bit of lag. I should have done it to Lee's, but I didn't expect to have that much fuel left. And as you see, my whole rocket is overheating. So it'll take ages for all this heat to, to dissipate, but eventually it will. It'll just take a lot of time. So we don't even have to need, we don't even need to point it exactly, just in the general direction. Because that has like 500 meters per second of delta V. Ignore what it says up there for it, or whatever. It has 500 seconds of delta V. Why is my, oh, I must have messed up when I time accelerated. I was time accelerating to try to get rid of some of the heat, but it just spread from down here all the way up to here. Or well, to the nose cones at least, I didn't notice that before. Yeah, there we go. So I added a rotation onto it so that it would be stable. And we're already way, 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 way deep into the atmosphere. Well, we're going to go way deep into the atmosphere. And I already can't switch back. So I'm going to go and build that rocket that will um, go to Duna, dock with this. Maybe even make its own little space station at Duna. I don't know. I'm just messing around at this point. It's a bunch of fun though.
Okay, that took a lot longer than the five minutes it says up here because I've been running at like a quarter speed or so, and it is terrible. I'm going to turn on the stats so I can see how hot these are, because they seem to be getting pretty hot. There we go. I should also mention this: the, the booster you used to get this thing into orbit is the same one I used for the main space station, and these things are pretty warm. Um, yeah, it took me ages. The staging was all, all messed up, so I had to fix some of that in flight. I don't even know half of this. I'm going to have to get all this fixed when I have more than 6 or 7 FPS, which is what I'm at right now. So how to dock. So I'm going to try to dock with this thing, which is all over there. And I'm only in a slightly lower orbit than that. About 20 kilometers each side. So eventually I will catch up to it with time acceleration, and I'm going to warp to land. Okay, it's been about five minutes and I'm already tired of waiting, so I'm going to do the lazy way. That's less efficient, but it will be slightly quicker. So even though I'm in a slightly lower orbit right now, I'm just going to bump myself up into a higher one, and then we have to wait less time after I get myself a, a large amount up. At least that's the theory. Okay, I should only have to wait like 6 or 10 orbits now instead of like probably like 50 or 60. Yeah, because this part's going to match with that eventually, so I'm going to time warp to one. Okay, so I got a close approach, so what I ended up doing is I'm um, just creating a maneuver node and close, making it even closer. So it was going to be something like 50 kilometers or 60 or 70, and well, I narrowed that down to 14, which is good, but it's not perfect, but I can just fix it from later. Close enough. Now I just kind of burn a little bit away from the probe, I'm in retrograde, to kind of push it back on to that away vector, which in turn actually moves me closer to it. I have done this over done this a couple times and I ended up crashing into my um, rocket, but most of the time that doesn't happen. You just kind of have to watch where you're going, and then you have problems. Okay, we're doing good so far. I mean, it does help because now that the rockets are throttled up, I have a lot more control. Ooh, the lag is for y'all. Okay, so we're heading straight towards it, and I have no clue how I'm going to couple with it. I probably should have planned that out beforehand. So just like before, this thing is still overheating. I just realized I have no control modules on this, so I can't control it at all. Yep, and no control whatsoever. That's not good. I could decouple it. Hmm. I really have no clue how I'm going to do this. What I can do is I can empty out all my fuel into this. Well, after I zero the velocity, because I need to do that first, or I will fly past it. And that will make it even harder to do. And I'm also eating up, up the mono propellant. So I'm going to be back when I've done something important, because it might be a while. Okay, guys, so I have docked it together, fueled up this whole part. So I'm going to go back. I don't care that I'm not being 100% efficient, just that I'm pretty close to being efficient. Or, well, I'm more efficient than I was, and I took a fair amount of fuel. I took out of here, out of, yeah, out of here, and out of here, and I think I took some out of here. 
Yes, and I might as well take this, pump it out into there. Just because it's OCD. Well, even though I'm not actually OCD. So let's go look where June is. I didn't plan this at all, so we're probably pretty far off. We are more than pretty far off. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put us into a higher orbit, so we can, um, well, time excite more. I'm going to put us, our, I guess I'll put ourselves into a, um, a thousand kilometer orbit. But sad, this thing takes ages to maneuver. Okay, guys, it might have taken me ages to do, but I finally got into a circular orbit. So. Now I'm going to time accelerate until I have a good maneuver node. Okay guys, so after a bit of fiddling, I got it down to 28 million meters above the surface of Duna. So now what we do is we time accelerate to length. So this burn is going to be ridiculously long because of my terrible, terrible thrust weight ratio. And I'll explain that. So normally it says it's pretty high, 13, but this, it wobbles. Which means really bad things, because if I keep thrusting and the front goes down, then it snaps in half and it's bad. So I'm probably going to have to start the burn really early, which is going to stink. But I'm going to time accelerate until 10 minutes out. Or 5, I guess. Okay, that took half of eternity. I actually play, I was just playing a game on my phone the whole time. But yeah, so let's time accelerate forward. We're going to time accelerate to the descending node, which then we can face our inclination and get us closer. Hmm. Okay, so we're approaching the descending node. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little. There we go, so I can just select the right thing. There we go. Now I just need to go get that down. NAN, that's not a good thing. I've never seen that before. Not a number. I guess it's so perfect it doesn't know what to do. Okay, now I'm within Duna's sphere of influence, and well, I'm going to bring my periaps down a whole bunch. But burning out a nominal vector jump, remember this is, you know, plus or minus or whatever they call it. But I remember it's a nominal vector. I should be thrusting that high. That was a bad choice. Okay, nothing's exploded yet. Which is usually a good sign. Oh, never mind, I forgot I ditched the other part so I can burn actually a lot quicker. But yeah, so I'm bringing this down to about 200 or 300 kilometers. So I have enough space to deorbit and enough space to revenue if I need to, which I will later. So now what I'm going to do make a big retrograde burn there. That's about good. It's close enough. So I'm going to time accelerate and do that burn. And it's going to be time accelerated, of course, because it's going to be ridiculously long.
Oh, so I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn retrograde with the RCS fuel. So we're just going to quick save first. And I want to decouple. Rotate and then detach that. Oh, well, I still bumped it. I just think it actually still has power, so I can control it remotely. What exploded? X20032. Is that the X20032? I don't know, I don't see anything blown up, so... It's probably fine, I hope. I'm going to throttle these up and hopefully um, I'm not going to decouple the next stage. Actually, I'm going to make this just to be sure it's certain. There we go. I'm hoping six kilometers will be oh, six, 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 six. That's what it paused on. Um, I'm going to assume that's going to be enough. So let's go down, because I, I did re-entry yet. When testing this vehicle at three kilometers per second. So I'm hoping that whatever I'm gonna be at now is gonna be perfectly safe. Okay, we're 12 kilometers up, going pretty quick. Maybe that'll add a little more drag. So I'm gonna deploy the main chute, well, drag chutes. Turn off stability. Flip us around. Maybe for lucky those things will deploy. I think they deploy like two and a half kilometers high, something like that. Or five. I guess five. This looks like a relatively flat area. Nope, never mind, not flat at all. It looks flatter, I guess I undershot. I'm gonna deploy the other shoots in just a second. Because I know if I deploy them too high, they'll disappear and break. Hopefully this is below that altitude. Deploy lows, and we have all the parachutes. We have all the parachutes in the world. Why aren't they deploying? Oh, there they go. Okay, I'm going to quick save. Because I was not expecting. Did that break? No, I'm surprised. Wow. So I'm going to quick save. And hopefully later, when if I have to reload that quick save, everything won't die. So I don't know, it's EVA. It's just a weight's barely above one. So I'm, I barely fly him. Oh, let's plant a flag. What should I call it? I'm gonna call it We Didn't Explode. Our temperature's going up. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder what the surface sample says. Grainy, okay, pretty much dust and EVA report. Yes, you can have sand castles, like the one on the moon. So let's get them back inside because this temperature is rising, even though that has nothing to do with it. It's just a reason for me to get them back inside. Pretty much it. He it's not like he'll die or anything. But I want to be careful because the the weight is so, um, well, the thrust of weight is really low. It's really easy to get in a bad situation. I 
No B to board. So I'm gonna quick save again. Um, and I guess we, we can't just go straight into orbit. I mean, it's not like it's gonna make much of a difference. But I guess we can just time accelerate a little. That's what I was afraid of. The leg seems to have gone through the ground. Well, hopefully that won't cause any problems. In the meantime, let's launch this thing. Okay, so now that I have everything done on Duna, I'm going to time accelerate. I'm actually, I have a probe landed on the ground from earlier, so I'm time accelerating until we're back into a position where we can come back home. So to get back, we're going to want it to be just like we launched. We're going to have Kerbin be somewhere over here, and it seems like we just got that thing ejected. Yeah, we didn't need that anyway. And so we're going to need to be about right here compared to where Duna is. So we're going to need to wait a while. Oh, sorry, I guess we're about in the right position right now. So let's go back to the Duna craft. Just going to zoom in. Switch to. And let's see if that's good enough. So it seems everything's going to be fine. I mean, we should, do have enough, we should have enough Delta V left even to, you know, use our engines instead of plow through the atmosphere. As I hope. But yeah, as you can see, our yaw, we're kind of having to compensate for that whole command pod thing sticking out of the side.
Okay, so now we have all that, which is really nice. I'm just going to keep lowering down my orbit so I don't re-enter at ridiculous speeds. And I know I'm wasting fuel doing this, but I have plenty of fuel. I have two kilometers per second, and all I'm going to do is just lower myself down. Okay, so I decided that I need to actually burn a little bit more retrograde here, just to be safe. And by that, I mean I actually went from experience and I overshot by about a ridiculous amount. That should be about fine now. Gonna quick save again. And let's go. Actually, I'm gonna burn even more retrograde. Okay, I'm pretty sure that'll be enough. It looks like it will be. Oop. Now I gotta use time accelerate when trying to load stuff in. Ooh, maybe we might actually be going in too short. Can't really tell. Let's go retrograde. No, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> well, we'll be fine if our parachutes deploy. Ooh, it's actually gonna be pretty close. Huh. I hope we're gonna land on land. Looks like we will. And I hope all of our stuff doesn't explode. Because that also wouldn't be good. Eh, we're pretty close. I mean, when you compare it to how far away you could have been, this is pretty close. Okay, well I guess it's good that I found that I need to manually deploy them. I can even try landing with the rest of this rocket. I'm gonna quick save low. Quick save low. Recover the rest of the rocket, even though I wasn't originally planning to. Like the docking ports under so much stress. Okay, gonna deploy that. Deploy that. That's gonna be close. I'm sure he'll survive. But do we really want to keep all of that and risk it? I'm sure it'll be fine. Gonna quick save right here, so just worst case scenario, I can just drop that off. That doesn't look quite level. It's so close. Okay, so let's go over... Do I want an EVA? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna quick save first. That doesn't matter. He's on the ground now. Let's decouple that. So we don't need it. I was hoping I'd be able to stand it up. I guess not quite. I can't even roll it over. Really? Oh, well, there I got it. But yeah. 
Got him out. Got him home. He's not dead. Although he spent like a couple years in space. But yeah, that's it for now, so thank you for watching. Leave a like or a favorite, and well, adios.